Good afternoon and welcome to NATO, to both you here in Brussels and in Naples. In a minute, my colleague uh, Roland, uh, Colonel Roland Lavoie will update you on Operation Unified Protector in great detail. Before that, I would like to say a few things uh, from Brussels. On Libya, tomorrow the North Atlantic Council will discuss with our operational partners the mission's progress. This meeting is part of our regular consultations on our operation. Allies' commitment to the mission success remains firm. We continue saving lives in Libya every day, and allies are as determined as ever to continue enforcing the United Nations mandate to protect civilians. In Afghanistan, we saw on Saturday a tragic event with the death of U.S. service soldiers members and Afghan soldiers in a helicopter incident. NATO expresses its strong solidarity with the American and the Afghan people and their governments. NATO is determined to stay the course in Afghanistan, especially in this crucial period towards transition to Afghan lead. And with that, I will hand over to my colleague Roland in Naples. Roland, the floor is yours, please. Bonjour, Carmen. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, NATO continues to uh, carefully monitor lines of confrontations between pro- and anti qaeda forces in areas such as the southwest of Tripoli and in the Nafusa Mountains, uh, which is showing the most activity, uh, and also in other areas of frictions, uh, such as Brega, uh, Misurata, and Zlitan. Let me begin with the Nafusa Mountains. Uh, our reports indicate that anti qaeda forces have consolidated their positions in the northwest of the range, in the vicinity of TG. As of Sunday, they were able to push forward from the recently secured town of uh, Bil Bir al Ghanam towards the coast, uh, the west coast of Tripoli. Near Brega now, we have observed increased fighting compared to the skirmishes we have seen in the past. Uh, there's considerable movement of heavy equipment from both sides, including artillery and tanks, as well as armored personal carriers. Although the front lines have remain relatively unchanged, however. To the west in Misrata, while shelling of the civilians from Zlitan has ceased as a result of recent NATO strikes, occasional shelling continues from Taurga in the south into Misrata. Indeed, pro qaeda forces continue to harass the population and to restrict their freedom of movement, illustrating their very aggressive posture. This week, pro qaeda forces have even tried to hit two NATO ships with rockets fire, uh, fired from Zlitan. The ships were providing naval gun fire support to air operations to strike command and control nodes of the 32nd Brigade which is Qadhafi's regime's uh, main elite formation. NATO airstrikes continued to focus on destroying and degrading command and control nodes and other military targets in order to erode the regime's ability to coordinate attacks on civilians and reduce its will to fight. The details of those strikes are provided in our daily operational update posted on the internet. I would like now to, uh, to report uh, that NATO aircraft uh, hit the military staging area in uh, Zlitan at 11.30 p.m., 11.45 p.m., and 2.34 a.m. local time last night. The target is uh, two former uh, farms building, uh, which have been taken over by pro qaeda forces and transformed into a field military complex with temporary accommodation facilities used as a staging point from which the pro qaeda forces were reinforcing troops, weaponry, and other military equipment in timely fashion to conduct attack against civilians. This was a legitimate target, uh, and by striking it, uh, NATO has reduced the pro qaeda forces' capability to threaten and attack civilians. We do not have evidence of civilian casualties at this stage, although casualties among military personnel, including mercenaries, are very likely due to the nature of the target. 
although it will be premature uh, to uh, jump to conclusions, it is becoming more and more apparent that pro kadhafi forces are losing their ability to conduct massive offensives. This does not preclude them, however, from operating from covered locations in agricultural, administrative, or even residential facilities or schools from where they command and conduct attacks. This explains why NATO has conducted several strikes in such militarized areas, taking extreme precautions not to arm innocent civilians living or working nearby. I would like now to give you an update on the strikes that were conducted since the evening of the August the 7th, uh, as NATO aircraft conducted several precision strikes against a Libyan fr frigate moored in the military side of the port of Tripoli. The successful airstrikes destroyed weapons and munitions before they could be used against the civilian population, NATO force or humanitarian shipping. NATO acted following airborne intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions that concluded that pro Qaddafi forces were active on and around that military ship. It became evident that the regime forces were removing weaponry and munitions from the warship with the intent of using them from other platforms. The strikes were successful. They are expected to reduce the regime's ability to conduct hostile actions or limit the flow of humanitarian aid within the country. I would now be pleased to take your, your questions. <laughs> 